Hey everyone, it's Josh, Jay Vintage Honda Minis uh, in Orlando, Florida. Uh, this is going to be a build series on a Z50 Softail. Uh, we're going to do a 140cc electric start engine in it. And I'm going to wire it up so we got full brake functionality with switches and uh, a battery box. Um, this is one of my frames that I did sell to the owner, the, the owner of this bike. It's got a street motorcycle title on it, so he will be able to put a tag and uh, ride around this neighborhood and have some fun with it. Uh, so um, let's go ahead and just get into it, and then I'll kind of highlight uh, as I build it kind of the more interesting aspects of the build, kind of show how I'm going to use a harness uh, and get it all uh, wired up correctly to make all this stuff work on this uh, year bike. So this bike is a... Uh, I think it's a 74, 73, I can't remember offhand, um, but it has, I prefer these frames, these soft tail frames with the through stud because you're going to have a big bolt that comes through and hooks on your shocks. I rarely ever have these bent because you got that really thick stud that comes through the bolt uh, as opposed to a later Z50R frame where they are uh, just welded on with threads and then you hook your shock onto it and put a nut on it so those tend to be tweaked up but these uh, seem to be much more durable so I prefer to collect these soft tail frames uh, because I just think that they're uh, a beefier design when it comes to the rear shock mount and just to give a visual too this is so this is on a Z50R and this is what I'm talking about on the later frames they just had studs and a threaded and then you put your bolt on it and that's on both sides so these are pretty pretty weak in this area. I always see these bent up from just uh, jumping or heavier riders on it. So that's the difference. This is a later model where they changed the design and then on that other frame I just showed you it's got the through hole that you run a big old stud through uh, which helps reinforce that area. Alright so I double checked on the vent. It is a 1974 and we're gonna go with the blue tank side cover front forks uh, but I and in anticipation for the build, uh, for this uh, mod build, I welded on a key switch and I welded on a battery tray and then I also welded on a brake uh, switch for the foot brake to activate the lights. So we did three things here, brake switch, battery, key switch. So those are the three kind of backbone add-ons that we're going to do on this frame to make all the wiring work and make it as a useful little mini motorcycle. So the first thing I'm going to do is, I uh, this is a Pitster Pro, this is actually labeled as a GPX engine. It's the 140, uh, but it's from Pitster Pro. Uh, it's the electric start. So I just drain the oil that it comes in. Uh, just drain that all out because you're going to want to put your fresh uh, appropriate oil in it. Uh, adjust your valves, which I have a video of adjusting the valves, which is the base uh, basically across the line for all these four-stroke engines, so check that one out. I'll put a link in the bottom of the video. Uh, put this valve lash at four thousandths of an inch. And I'm going to go ahead and get the frame set on, and then we'll start building around this. We got the frame mounted onto the block. Uh, I did go ahead and put my races in before I put the frame on so I could kind of pound those in without it being on the stand. Uh, you might have to finagle a little bit with this uh, mount area right here. I just kind of tweaked it outward, pushed it outward with a hammer. That way it will go over and then when you tighten your engine mount bolt, it will pull it back into place. So that might be an area that you need to kind of open up a little to fit over these import blocks. Uh, next up, I'm going to put my fender on. I always put my rear fender on first before I start building around because you got to get access to these little holes. Uh, this is powder coated, so I chase these uh, little M6 by 1.0 threads in the frame because you will break a M6 bolt if it has too much tension on the thread area. It will snap on you if you fight it. So just better to clean out these areas that you're going to be putting bolts and screws back in on the frame. Just go ahead and use a M6 by 1.0 tap. So when we're going to mount this fender on, I cleaned up a little area here on the back mount, lower mount, so we have some bare metal from the powder coat. And then I modified the uh, little uh, bushing 
or grommet that's going to go there because I'm going to use some spacers with these washers to help uh, create continuity from the tail light so that we, you know, the way I'm wiring it, I need functionality like a real brake light. Uh, so I'm going to have that one as the pathway back to frame the ground. So uh, if you're doing something similar to that, just be aware that you're going to want to create a pathway for the uh, rear tail light the ground back to your frame. You can see I did quite a bit of work out off the video here, but everything's been covered on these other bikes. It's not too difficult. I think what will be helpful for us in this video series is to focus on the uh, harness and electrical side of things. Uh, I'm just making up my own harness as far as what I'm going to use. There's nothing I researched, but I'm going to use a K1 that has the brake switches in it. It's uh, made for a battery, uh, so I got my batteries tray behind the cover here. Uh, I welded on that key switch so we're gonna put a key switch for on and off. Uh, this is an electric start engine so uh, what I'm gonna do is a sub harness to convert or actually run the CDI kit and then all the 12 volt electricity will be fine running through the uh, standard K1 harness. Change out the front bulbs, change out the, the rear bulb and put an electric start button up on the handlebar. I'm just gonna wire the headlight as it just should just come on right when the bike's on, so I'm not really worried about an on-off. Well, maybe I'll put an on-off switch, I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, so this will be it for this first video on this bike. You know, I don't, like I said, I'm not gonna worry too much about showing too much of the assembly, because I cover that a lot in all the other builds. Um, but nice pipe here, this is a big bore pipe or a 140 but it's styled after the um, you know the original K3 and up style uh, muffler with the muffler shield uh, this was off motor kit they're out of Europe uh, it was a pretty reasonable price um, but that's where I got it from it's not sold in the States um, but yeah that, that's gonna be it for this video and then the next video that I do on this bike is going to be dedicated to kind of running through the whole harness and how I'm going to get that working. All right, guys, subscribe if you don't. Uh, appreciate it if you do. Time to go get some pizza with the family. It's Friday night. <laughs>